Hello gang, thank you for joining me today. This feels a little bit like the old dance, uh, daily art adventure, doesn't it? Doing something different, woohoo! <laughs> I've had a, uh, a row of, of architectural renderings, landscape renderings actually in the last several weeks. And uh, so I thought I might as well bring you in and watch over my shoulder let's get official this is dan's art adventure number whoops i forgot to put the number 15 no 16. <laughs> get it right dan 16 is supposed to be up there pen and ink foliage all right you can tell how important that official stuff is to me <laughs> all right now this is my upstairs studio those of you who may be new to my channel um, I have two art studios in my house, long story, because for years I had a career as an illustrator and I had all the tools, like a light table and all kinds of other, airbrush, all kinds of other stuff. So I had a, a studio set up to be an illustrator and then 15 years ago we moved to this house and by that time I was a full-time oil painter and my wife was kind enough to look for a house that had a downstairs studio. So that's why I have two studios. I know I'm lucky me. All right, forgive me. I'm going to cover you up for one second. Otherwise, you'll all get dizzy while I move you guys from here to another east uh, to another camera holder. Okay, thanks. Hang on. <laughs> it's kind of like. Uh, hooding a falcon. How about that? You guys consider yourselves hooded right now. It's, this is so high-tech, so slick, I tell you. <laughs> all right, we're all ready to go, I think. There you go. Let's put you over my drawing. And uh, I'm working on a light table, as you can see. So I've got this much of the um, drawing already finished. And this is a backyard patio with a fireplace and a wall and some stairs. And uh, I was working on the, the foliage and said, wait a minute, you guys could probably Help me. Let, me, let me want to see what you guys are going to see. All right, so let me show you what I'm working with here. I should turn the lights back on. All right, so this is, this is my rough sketch. Hang on, I'll turn, there we go. This is my rough sketch in pencil, a little bit of ink refinement. This is probably the third version, I think, that I've done for this client before we got all the bugs worked out. That's very, very typical. And this is pretty messy. Uh, but I am now tracing it onto actually Bristol board. And I have the, the pad here so I can show you. You're probably familiar with this. Single ply, smooth surface. I would rather be doing this on watercolor paper, but I didn't, uh, I didn't want to take the time to go searching for it. <laughs> My last pad uh, ran out. I have more, but I don't know where it is. So <laughs> You know how it goes. I'm in a hurry here. I'm being paid by the hour. <laughs> All right, so a couple tips and tricks on foliage. Hello, Trish and Tiago and Foxhole Jim. <laughs> and Brenda from Australia. All right, now, can you guys see what I'm doing? Barely, I know. Let me see if I can get you in any closer. All right, so I get a whole hillside full of bushes, and I really, I have developed a, a trick. First of all, I'm using a cheap... Uh, waterproof and that's really important because I'm going to watercolor this this drawing when I'm finished. I don't know if I'll do that on broadcast or not. But um, Okay, so I'm doing it. Let me show this to you again kind of with some explanations and slower. So there's a bush. Let's do another one over here. So this is just sort of your basic foliage. First of all, I'm holding my my pen quite vertical and I'm not using my fingers. Like, see how this, when you draw in the normal way and your fingers do all the work, 
I'm trying not to do that. Instead, I'm moving my whole arm from the shoulder. Why am I doing that? Because I get a better random line when I use my whole arm than I do. Let me use, here's a post-it note. When you use your fingers, <laughs> here's, what, here's what you tend to get. <laughs> you tend to get repetitive, repetitive marks, even when you're trying not to. But when you use your whole arm, like I'm doing now, you get much more random. And of course, random is more realistic when it comes to foliage. So, but, okay, now a couple other tips. And I've, I've done some of this before, so forgive me, those of you who are looking for something new, I'm not sure you're going to get it. But, uh, so the first line, I basically went, counterclockwise. Now it doesn't matter which way I go first. Here's what does matter. After going this way, now I'm going to go turn around and go the other, other way. Again, holding the pen, moving my whole arm from the shoulder, and doing a random mark that overlaps the first one. You see that? So what I'm after here is true randomness, like nature, like foliage, and it's harder to do than you would think. I have a couple more steps I'm going to do. Uh, one is on this particular bush, I'm going to give some indication of ground, and then I typically go around and outside, uh, and I could draw a couple specific leaves if I want to. Most of the time at this size, it's just a dot or a circle. I draw dots and circles outside that line, and then the same thing, dots and circles inside the line. All right, so that's a four-step process. I'll do that again. Let's see where, let me look at my sketch. Okay, sure, 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 right up here, another bush. So again, starting anywhere and creating a random line going around counterclockwise and then turning around and going the other direction why? Because I'm more likely to fool my arm into creating a truly random mark if I go two different directions. And then come back and do some dots and circles. Again, I could draw a few spe specific leaves if I really want to. But again, at this size, most leaves are just dots or circles. And then the same thing, maybe a little bit bigger. So these... These might be sky holes, quote unquote, or they might just be outstanding leaves. Doesn't matter. So that's just a shorthand way of, a quick way of doing foliage. So now that I've described it all, I'm going to just bore you to death by um, doing a whole bunch of them really quickly. And again, it doesn't matter. I, this one, I'm going to go clockwise first and then counterclockwise second. Then dots and circles, dots and circles. There, that bush is done. Get it? So really fast. I have not got all day is what I like to say about the, the work of an illustrator. And I'm not being paid by the hour, by the way. That was a joke. <laughs> all right, now here's a, here's a, whoops, you guys can't see it very well, can you? Okay, let's see. If, yeah, I can do this without the light table. So here is a, conifer pine tree uh, ne tree with needles instead of leaves so same thing just a different shape now this one the the, the dots outside certainly would not be the shape of leaves And I think there's another one of those. Let me turn on my light table for a minute. Way over here. All right. So again, again, holding my my uh, pen rigid in my fingers. My fingers are not moving. My whole arm is moving again because that creates a more authentically random or chaotic mark. When you draw in the traditional way with your fingers, you're a little bit too much in control. And so you're likely to make predictable marks. Now I'm going to do some, 
me look at my sketch again. I am going to do some uh, watercolor on top of all this. Oh, no, I'm going to do some um, cross hatching on top of that. Okay, I know you can't see this very well, but forgive me for just a minute. So you're going to get a little bit more than just foliage here. Okay. I am also drawing a fence at the top of this embankment. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's a wall down here, then a bank, slanted earth uh, ground, and then at the top of the bank is a what looks like a um, a wrought iron fence, but these days it's probably made out of uh, aluminum. Now, when I'm doing architectural, commercial architectural renderings like this, I'm always sort of walking a, a, <clears throat> a balance, a tightrope between accurate, tight, realistic rendering, which, you know, architectural renderings tend to be sort of realistic and tight, right? So I'm always walking a balance between doing that and doing a more artistically satisfying drawing. And you see me doing some of that, like making some of these staves in the, in the fence, making them irregular, making interesting marks instead of just realistic ones. Do you see what I mean? Like, look at that stay there on the end. Parts of it are completely missing. I Sorry, I have to turn on the uh, light table again because there's a gate down here. And again, I'm tracing here on um, what kind of gate should I do? In my sketch, I made it a rounded top, but I'm not sure that's what I want to do. Yeah, I'm going to do rounded in that way. All right, you can't see very well, so there we go. So I'm just going to make the, in the gate, the, the, the top of the pickets or staves, whatever you call them, go in an arched pattern. Little bit more help. Oh yeah, I think I put a, oh yeah, I did. Okay, here's another, I, I haven't done this kind of tree yet in this illustration. That is a, a small tree with uh, the tree trunk. And this is probably, almost certainly, a crepe myrtle tree, which is are very common and popular in my part of the world. Very distinctive uh, trunk or almost stalk. You can almost call it a stalk instead of a trunk. Thin, spindly, going out in different directions. It's a beautiful tree. Um, one of the nice things about the crepe myrtle is it's, even when it's completely bare in the, in the dead of winter, um, it's a beautiful tree because of the shape of the trunk. Here I'm, so I'm basically here doing the same thing I've been doing. Went around this way, then back the other direction, and then some marks that have es escaped, so to speak. And I'm not sure what these are. I, uh, maybe they're leaves, and the, it so far away you can't see the stems. Maybe they're leaves that are being blown from the tree. I'm not really sure, but I just do it because I think it looks cool. And you might have a much better technique for, let's do one more 
squished down here there. You all may have a much better technique for drawing foliage than I do. If so, let me know what it is. Now, I must add that obviously I'm not doing hyper realistic. This, so in this regard, this is very much like my oil painting, right? I'm not after hyper realism. Yes, I could do that. Yes, I've done that. But that's, first of all, I'm not being paid enough to do that here for an architectural rendering which is really good because I don't consider that the hyper-realistic stuff is not the, the peak. Oh, I'm supposed to do something over here. Let's see what I put in my sketch. Okay, there's two more bushes going up the stairs here. Um, yeah, let's make this one round. And I, I don't know what kind of bush, <laughs> I don't know what kind of bushes these are. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, dwarf ivy. And let's do another um, conifer, pine-ish pine tree right here. Maybe a juniper. There's all kinds of junipers, all, as you know, all different kinds of trees. All right, a little hint of a center stem there. All right, so there, just no muss, no fuss, a few minutes. The, uh, the outline of the foliage is down. Now let's do some cross hatching. <laughs> Hello, Kono. And Mayo Radek. Radek, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so I'm going now to a, a smaller, a finer point pen. And I'm always, of course, keenly aware of which way the light is coming from. And in this case, it's coming from the upper left. And so I'm going to do more light, first of all. I'm going to do simple cross hatching on this illustration. And in this case, my first layer of cross hatching is actually pointing up at the light source. The light source is coming from the upper left and my all my cross hatching will be pointing the same direction. Now I m may come back and do a a second layer. So I think technically <laughs> this would actually be called hatching, <laughs> not cross hatching. I'm not sure about that, but because I've never really heard anybody else call it anything, but it's cross hatching without the cross, right? Because it's just hatching. So maybe that's what this is. Now, let me be quick to add, of course, some of you have, most of you perhaps have seen my, my one video that really went viral several years ago, and I still get lots of views on it, is uh, Pen and Ink Cross Hatching Master's Edition, I call it. That's so funny. There was a story, there was a there was development that made me call it that at the time. This is nine years ago. Um, it's because I had done a number of other cross-hatching videos before that that were getting a fair amount of play, and they still do as well. And then I just said, well, wait a minute. I, since, since so many people are looking at this cross-hatching video, I should do one that really gives a deeper explanation of how I do it. So that's what that one video was. And I've had a lot of comments uh, on it, of course. And um, one of the things that people have pointed, been been happy to point out, <laughs> is that hey, <laughs> um, that's not very good cross hatching. <laughs> so and so's, and they'll name some famous illustrator. Does it much better, or or? much more realistic. Okay, so let me admit right off the bat that my I do I can do a wide variety of cross hatching. I can indeed and have done over the years. But my native style which you're seeing right now um admittedly is a more abstract style than many artists use. And one of the ways that it's abstract is what you're seeing right here, that I have all the cross, all the hatching, it's not cross, all the hatching going exactly the same angle. <laughs> 
and uh, you know some very sophisticated cross hatching would have the the shading going in all different directions and I admire and respect and sometimes do that technique but most of the time not uh, again somebody in this case uh, a company is hiring me to do this rendering they've hired me to do a whole bunch this is probably my 50th rendering for these people maybe and they know what to expect right they're looking for they're expecting a Dan Nelson look now I doubt that they would be terribly shocked or upset or would they even notice if I started using a different technique of cross hatching I don't know if they'd even notice somebody would but they're paying me to be me so I'm, I'm using my what I call my native style which admittedly intentionally on purpose is a more abstract way of doing shading than the stuff I described earlier where you the lines go all different directions so there you go I know it's not that realistic I know I know I'm not I'm not trying to be realistic I'm trying to be visually interesting and you could say well it's not very interesting if the cross hatching all goes the same way <laughs> What is interesting to one person, what I may not be interesting to another. I do, by the way, looking at this uh, now, where it is right now, I do think I'm probably going to come back and do to actually turn it into cross hatching. Uh, but this is very typical for me. Um, my, again, my technique, my style, which is admittedly more abstract than what many do, is I'll do the entire illustration. And if you've watched my, if you've watched my one viral. It has, you know, four and a half million views. If you've watched my, then, you know, I already, I described this. I do the cross, I do the hatching for the whole illustration. The whole first layer all goes the same direction. And then come back into the second layer. And that's, it's a little bit weird. I readily admit that it's what I do. I let me think. I know by the time I was in college, by the time I was an art major in college, uh, this habit, this technique, this style, if you will, was already firmly uh, entrenched in me because I can remember. In fact, I think I might have an illustration. Hang on just a second. Okay. There's one of the, one of my cartoons. Yeah, here it is. Good. <laughs> You want to see something I did, sorry about the shininess, um, an illustration, a cartoon, which I did a lot of, there we go, which I did a lot of uh, early in my career. And, and this is one of the earliest. This would have been done in 1975, <coughs> uh, perhaps. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And back in these days, I would do, uh, I would draw these with a and again with a fountain pen with a you know old or a rapidograph something like this a real pen so to speak um, <clears throat> without any sketch I would just sit down on a, with a blank piece of paper and just start drawing now the, the good thing about that is that there's a the line is very spontaneous very organic and spontaneous now when I look at it now I, I see immaturity of stroke <laughs> immature stroke uh, very much but at the same time <laughs> it's still it's still quite expressive isn't it obviously these are <laughs> I, I but um, I've done variations on this drawing two or three times over the decades uh, updated my it redrawn it the basic theme of a people in a not a very happy picture is it <laughs> That's, that's me. I'm very happy. I just get a kick out of drawing unhappy people. <laughs> Something's wrong with that, huh? Anyway, uh, so in, uh, all the way back in 1975, I would do all the craft hatching one way, then come back and do it another way, and so on. So there, that's a little adventure time, through time here. Oh, while, while we're at it, <laughs> here's another one. I've been cleaning up my, uh, my files here and getting you know cleaning up stuff and this is this was about 1987 maybe 
so 35 years ago. This is airbrush. And um, back it, it, in about 1995, I switched from um, using a pen for the outline. I'm looking for a sample of my work, not a character, and I'm not sure I'm going to find one. I, I switched from doing outlines in pen. See, I would use a again like a fountain pen to do the, the outline was thin in about 1995 I switched now this is just a one of a series I did for this this magazine children's magazine but the difference here is I did in about 1995 I made a very important shift in my cartooning and I started doing the outline with a brush and I think my my cartooning my technique is uh, there, I say vastly superior when I switch to a brush. Anyway, there you go. There's a little trip down my memory lane. Anyway, <laughs> you might some of you might find that interesting. If you don't, sorry. <laughs> if you don't, sorry. We're done. <laughs> All right. Now back back to the job at hand. Um, and of course, I'm going to do shading all down here. I'll do a little bit just to demonstrate against my first layer. Oh, I let that pen sit there uncovered for several minutes and it got a little bit dried out. Um, right, always aware of shadows, which way the light is coming from. All right, now I, I won't do any more of this because this, in this broadcast, I advertised it as foliage. So let's do a little bit of cross hatching. So I typically go at a 90 degree to angle to the first, not always 90 degrees. Sometimes I um, go at it slightly off 90, which actually I am slightly off 90 right here. And Again, thinking of the light coming from the upper left, therefore the shadows are darkest on the lower right. So that's a couple bushes with uh, two layers of cross hatching. Now I, I sometimes do very extensive in my illustrations. You can, you can go to my website, dannelsonart.com and click on illustrations and then click on um, pen and ink and you can see some really extravagant sophisticated cross I mean layers and layer 10 10 layers of cross hatching sometimes and then very often finishing with either airbrush or watercolor the nice thing about finishing with an airbrush is that airbrush, of course, has no texture, so to speak, no texture of its own. So the the beauty of the cross hatching doesn't get lost or covered up. Whereas when I do watercolor <clears throat> on top of the cross hatching, the watercolor itself has a texture, has edges, you know, so it tends to get a lot more busy. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's do, I'm going to, Fill in a little ground cover, indicating um, what we call in this part of the country mulch. Uh, can be pine needles. Again, in this part of the country, we call it pine straw, or can be wood chips or whatever. And, and again, what you see me doing right here is a technique that I that I often use when indicating some kind of t culture, and that is circles and dots. Circle, circle, dot, 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 circle, dot, circle, circle, dot, circle, dot, dot, circle, get the point. <laughs> and also, um, lines helping to indicate that this is a bank that, that comes down at this angle. I think I'm going to come up here in this 
this is getting a little bit detailed for uh, architectural rendering, but I'm going to do it anyway. Parts of this fence, anyway. I'm going to do hatching. And as you, I don't know if you noticed, but because it's so small, I don't, I'm not bothering necessarily doing it at the right angle. I'm just doing it whatever angle. It, it doesn't matter because it's so, such a skinny mark. And I, I won't do the whole fence, by the way. I kind of like the way it's shaded up here and not down here. You don't know why I like that, but I do. All right, now I'm going to end this broadcast pretty, pretty soon. Um, now that I've done cross hatching on both directions on this bush, on these bushes, not over here yet, just here, I'm not terribly happy with the way they look because they I've lost too much of the bush shape. They just look like a blob. All right, so I'm going to actually do sort of what again, what I call scribble hatching. So I'm making a line very much like the original line that I made to give a little bit more form to the bush. Does that make sense? Just sort of redrawing the outline again because um, I feel like I had lost it, it, the bushes, the outlines got lost in the cross hatching. No problem, just come back and do the outlines again and I'm just but what I'm doing now is sort of a cross between shading and drawing sort of thus the scribble hatching I call it which is cross hatching where you you allow the line to, to go in all kinds of random directions let's do these two trees and, and sit back take a breath and see if I like see if I like the way that's looking now these will become quite distinct when I add watercolor to them. Yeah, that's a little better. But now that I've done that, one thing always leads to another, right? I'm discovering that, wait, I should make more of the shadows that are coming from these bushes to the lower right. Let's, let's just push them a little bit. Ooh, and now I just started doing something. Again, this is sort of a, a variation of scribble hatching. Real cross hatching, let me demonstrate this on a piece of sticky note. What I call real cross hatching is I only draw on the downstroke, right? That's what you've seen me doing. Then there's this economy, <laughs> economy cross hatching where I draw in both directions. That's the, the scribble action. And this has, is obviously much looser, less precise, just has a slightly different feel. And I just started doing that uh, on that shade right there. Sometimes I don't mix the two. Either, either drawing is loose and has scribble hatching or it's tight and is all precise cross hatching. Usually I don't mix the two, but in this case I am including some messy cross-hatching. All right, so there's, um, I will call those again uh, for an architectural rendering. Uh, pretty, pretty much done. <laughs> Saint Bibfelt. <laughs> Thou art a pen and ink artist, and to pen and ink thou shalt return. <laughs> Thank you, Franz. <laughs> That's great. Um, yes, I might show you the watercolor part. Uh, indeed, I'll do a separate broadcast. All right, let me let me show one more thing. Again, since this is not a, a fine arts piece of art, it's not going to hang up. I feel like I have a little bit more freedom to do whatever needs to be done to make it work. So sometimes, again, in a commercial pen and ink job, this is a whiteout pen, right? And by the way, I have several brands well, through the years. I bought several brands, but uh, this one is the best. There you go. And uh, let me turn on more light here. 
here. Um, so here on the light side of these bushes, I can come in and again exaggerate the, the light effect a little bit and just remove any marks or dots that I just don't like very much. Now, you know, I'm cheating right now because normally I would not do this <clears throat> before I do the watercolor. I might do it on top of the watercolor, but I, I just wanted to, since I'm going to end this broadcast here, just talking about pen and ink, um, I thought I'd go ahead and show you this cool trick. Just, just looking for interesting marks. Yeah, that's actually a little bit better. I've been focusing these white dots on the upper left-hand side of these bushes. And again, just any, you know, they're in the course of drawing in such a messy manner, there's sometimes there's a, a confluence of lines that that is not that attractive. So voila, come in and and do a white out on top of it. Make sense? So I'm going to end there. Thank you for your chat. Trish, Tiago, Franz, Mayo, Kono, Brenda, Jim Foxhole. <laughs> and I'll leave this as a pretty short broadcast. Is that all right? Thanks for watching. Yeah, and I'll come back since I'm all set up. Uh, I'm going to finish the, the, the shading with pen. Pen and then come back and do watercolor, and I'll have a separate broadcast for that. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.